Greetings to all radioactive professors, immortal blimp pilots, and kids named Mel. I am Mug Berserk, the very, very guy. So, who likes machines? Well, I see a few billion hands going up, but machines were a really tricky business. So many advanced moving parts, expensive to buy and expensive to build, but they sure do make our lives easier. Technology keeps getting smaller, more practical, and easier to manage. Yeah! Technology is so easy now! In fact, it's so easy, I bet I could make my own machines. And I know exactly how to go about that. Thus, I present to you a game that simulates this very concept. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the return of the Incredible Machine Contraptions! Welcome, welcome to the, the return, return of the Incredible Machine Contraptions! contraptions. Thank you. Don't worry if this game doesn't seem familiar to you at all. It's okay. It's so obscure that only nine people currently like it on Facebook, so you're not alone. The Incredible Machine started out on DOS back in 1992. If my history serves me right, then from what I understand, this was one of those games that, once upon a time, was pretty much on a need-to-own basis for schools everywhere, and it was really good too. So good that the students practically had to fight each other to play this game. In fact, it was so good that they made a sequel for it. And another, and another, and, well, this is probably the fourth game of the series. Or, maybe it's the seventh. Or, actually, it really just depends on where or when you want to count. So why aren't I starting there? From the beginning. Well, for one, I still technically haven't actually done that yet. If that wasn't already apparent. And for two, this is the only one I've ever actually played. So yes, I'm starting from a sequel. Actually, this might not even be a sequel at all. It really seems to just copy and paste a lot of its content from previous games, like The Incredible Machine 2's levels and music from The Incredible Machine 3. Apparently, this was a common practice for the series, re-releasing the same game over and over and over again with a fresh coat of paint. However, the reason it's okay for the Incredible Machine and not Call of Duty is because we're learning! Right? Right? Isn't that right? Of course it is. Let me show you what I've learned. Here's a pot of coffee. So should we just put it in the coffee maker and let it brew? Well, sure. If you're... <laughs> we're making coffee for fun, people! And that means we have to set up these brick platforms next to a makeshift air and motor system, bring in a mandrel, a mouse and cheese, along with a balloon with a cat under it, drop in some floors, and a bouncy thing around the can opener. Don't forget a laser! Maybe add some of this, uh, no, wait, no, get rid of the mandrel, because it really wasn't necessary. Uh, roll down some wallpaper. Actually, no, forget the wallpaper. We need something more spacious. More space. How much space? All of it! All the space! Yeah, what's more spacious than space? Now let's put in some civilizations, add some planets, and voila! What do you think? Well, the unexpected return of the incredible delectable machine Revengeance Contraptions is a puzzle game, complete with physics and quite a lot of choice in your own solutions. While most puzzle games only allow for one solution to solve the puzzle, provided you don't exploit something anyway, the indispensable unexpected return of the incredible delectable Ratchet Machine Souls Revengeance Contraptions Solid is so open with its puzzles that there can be any number of solutions. Oftentimes you can even solve a puzzle with even fewer pieces than intended, but other times they just kind of stick random pieces in there to confuse you. So, what are we doing all this for? Actually, we're doing it for this guy. Hi, I'm the professor. So, I see. This is the professor. And yes, as far as I know, that's his actual name. I'd show you what he looks like, but he never actually appears in-game. Then again, if the Incredible Machine is anything to go by, I assume he looks like this. But, wait, then there's... I'm confused! What happened? Did the games not even decide? Are there just multiple professors running around, perhaps? And why doesn't he ever show you his face? I'm speaking to you through this loudspeaker because one of my experiments went wrong. I'm currently radioactive, and I don't want to contaminate you. Oh sure, already making excuses right off the bat, eh, Professor? Not exactly making a very good first impression here, are you? 
I know you just don't want us to find out you're actually a 400 foot tall platypus bear with pink horns and silver wings, but that doesn't explain how this megaphone keeps stretching and contorting like this. Um, aliens. Ancient aliens. It's pretty obvious. Now I've assembled dozens of contraptions for you to complete. If you can solve them all, then I'll know you're the one who's got what it takes to be my apprentice. Just choose where you want to go by clicking on one of these signs here. <laughs> Good luck! Okay, the professor has clearly seen my old high school resume involving pretty much nothing but washing dishes, a hint of food service, and some volunteer work. So, with 217 lessons in rigorous training, or just sadistic initiation by building a giant Rube Goldberg mess out of cheap household materials, filling up an entire room to do something we could have done with our own hands in two seconds flat, that is, if we really didn't want to be productive, I will become personally certified and qualified to perform scientific breakthroughs for the benefit of mankind by his side. All right. Sounds reasonable enough. So, what does he want us to do? <laughs> what the heck was that? Don't get so close. I don't want you blasting that thing in my ear. Ow! If you're playing this, this is probably your first contraption. If not, you can turn me off by clicking on the Done button. Click on Next to hear more, or Back to hear previous instructions. This takes about two minutes. Wait, so let me get this straight. You seriously need me to push buttons to let you know when you can talk or not? You just don't want us to know that you're secretly a robot, don't you? I'm on to you. The large area behind me is the contraption playfield. This is where you solve all the contraptions I've constructed for you aspiring apprentices. Aspiring apprentices? You mean, you've done this before? But... I thought I was special. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to try him. Keep the pinball from going off of the screen for at least five seconds. I win! Make toast in each of the toasters and hit the eight ball off the top of the screen. Excuse me, what? Just how in the world are these things related? What practical purpose does this even serve? Bonk Pavlov on the head. Hit the boxing glove! Don't you walk out on me! Ah! I can't take any more of this! You know what? Really, I think the main reason anyone would even want to play this game in the first place is to start building their own contraptions anyway. So, let's play around and see what we can come up with. You've got a slew ton of parts to use for your Rube Goldberg machines or whatever you want to mess around with. Each part has various different properties. You can stretch out these walls and pipes, flip just about everything, reprogram significant aspects of the object, including any living creature's genetic code, and even this incredibly useless magnifying glass. I know it's useless because I can't see anything while looking through it. There's always this creepy eyeball looking at me that keeps getting in the way. Finally, there's the garbage bin for anything you've decided you want to get rid of. And you can throw anything into the garbage bin. And I mean anything. ANYTHING! Nitroglycerin? Throw it in the garbage bin. These highly sensitive flint rocks? Throw them in the garbage bin. Plasma phasers? Garbage bin. Nuclear warheads? Obviously they belong in the garbage bin. I mean, where else would you put them? A small little boy named Mel Schlemming? Well, there aren't any beds in this game, so he'll have to sleep in the garbage bin next to this rather disorganized pile of dynamite I've set here and the stack of 18 identically coordinated alligators I'm throwing away right now. I guess what I'm trying to say is, pretty much anything you do, hilarity ensues. The mouse eats the cheese, the cat eats the mouse, the alligator eats the mouse, and the human, and another, and another, and another... Wow. Uh, it's pretty good to know. The professor has this never-ending disposable supply of identical little boys named Mel to get rid of. Very resourceful, sick menace. Newton the mouse over here seems to have the right idea. Watch him go into his little mouse hole. In space. Aw, it even has a little door. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna go throw this entire planet in the trash now. Bye-bye. Actually, now that I look at this, noticing these objects seem wildly out of proportion. They're just entirely the wrong size. Could... could this... No. It couldn't be. 
Could it? Is this the laboratory that Frogger was created in? Have I been standing in the birthplace of a hero all this time? It must be. I've finally figured it out. I've had him all wrong. He's not a platypus bear or a robot. He's a hero, a giver of life. I've got to make this right. I was never able to complete all these puzzles as a kid. For the sake of my childhood, I must finish every last one of them! I'm nearing the end. It's at this point that you're expected to manipulate every limitation of the engine. Every trick in the book. Every last pseudo-glitch in the game in order to make your way to the top. This is it. Last mission. Creation. I know what I must do. Everything I've learned. Every skill I've earned. Shall be put to the test. Come on. Hit me! Wait, what? What is this? This is some incredibly unfitting music. Better switch it to a rock. Wait, that's it? Well, that was incredibly easy. But wait. This means... I've done it! What else can still be said about the indispensable, interstellar, unexpectedly unbelievable return of the legend of the incredible, inconceivable, delectable, deductible, ratchet portal machine, soul ciders, reventions, pack doom, cricket contraption, solid, super mega, ultra plus, dunupple deluxe, XXL, limited extreme, special definitive collector's edition of the year Mark V, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series, and Knuckles. Well, it's a brilliant little puzzle game. The puzzles are challenging. There's an astounding variation of parts and scenery. The physics aren't too floaty and are never randomized. And perhaps one of the best features is that it contains this very, very beautiful soundtrack. Even though some of the tracks are lifted straight from the previous release, Train Town. 
I suppose the only conceivable couple of issues are that some of the puzzles can get a little repetitive. Sometimes they even use the same goal twice in a row. And also, when you complete a contraption, you have the option of viewing the developer's solution right away to see if you came up with something that they never intended. But the game has a tendency to not recognize any change in programming stats you might have used in the process, which can cause their own solution to fail. Now, this isn't a common glitch. I came through this entire campaign without running into it one single time, but I have witnessed it before. So, all things considered, you can't really go wrong with this one. It's a well-executed, open-ended physics puzzle game. Well, I suppose you could go wrong if you couldn't get one of these 15-year-old discs to run. Fortunately, Good Old Games has the entire Incredible Machine compilation in the Incredible Machine Mega Pack, which includes contraptions. Actually, this might also be a good time to point out that the creators of the Incredible Machine have even put out a spiritual successor on Steam called Contraption Maker. No, that sure does happen a lot these days, doesn't it? The legacy of the Incredible Machine shall live on. Well, looks like I just became the professor's apprentice. You can trust me. I'm certified. It's official now. I'm Lug Berserk, the very varied guy. And as always, stay ge- Hey! I just finished an entire review completely solo. No guests at all! I can't believe I finally did it! Somebody catch me! Ow! This appears as a dream, don't sweat it. It's the 